Now when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it happens suddenly. It's not slow, slow, slow. Quick! That's right. And so when he comes upon you, he gives you the ability to speak other languages. You don't have to understand what you're saying. You're talking to God. You're praising him. You have power now to raise the dead. To heal the sick. To cast out demons. To cure the lepers. And that's what Jesus told his disciples to do. In Matthew 10 verse 8. That's a very important scripture. Write it down. Matthew 10, verse 8. He said, He said to the disciples, You heal the sick. You cleanse the lepers. You raise the dead. You cast out demons. You raise the dead. You cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Don't ask God to do it. Did Jesus ever ask the Father, Oh God, would you please heal this person? Never. He did it. Oh, you say, yeah, but that was Jesus. But out of the mouth of Jesus, he said, He that believes on me, the works I do, shall he do also, and greater works than me. Because I'm going to the Father. As John 14, 12. Write it down. Wait on. You can do those works. Don't ask God. Because he will not hear your prayer. Because that's a prayer of unbelief. He'll say to you, I already gave you power. You do it. Now you must use your faith. Amen? Amen. And you can. Praise the Lord. And so when the disciples were baptized with the Holy Spirit, their lives were changed. This is a new day for you. This is a day for you and your life to be changed. As Brother Montalban said, this is the day of the Holy Spirit. Now let me explain a little bit about speaking in tongues. Because people are afraid of this. Christians are afraid of it. Even though Jesus said, in Mark 16, he said, they shall speak with new tongues. Let me read it to you. Mark 16, Verse 17 and 18. 
And these signs shall follow those who believe. Do you believe? Then the signs should follow you. He said in my name. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. Got it? They shall take up serpents. He means not, not on purpose, but by accident. Like, yeah, like Paul did at that time. And the snake bit him. And he should have died. Why? Because he remembered this verse. He said, "Let the dead bury the dead." Paul remembered this verse. He said, "Let the dead bury the dead." If they take up serpents, it shall not hurt them. If they drink any deadly thing, they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. They shall recover. Once the Holy Spirit is upon you, and already inside you, your flesh is between the Holy Spirit upon and the Holy Spirit inside. And you become a Holy Spirit sandwich. The Holy Spirit upon, the Holy Spirit inside. And you have the power of Jesus. And when the Holy Spirit comes, on you and you know that you, you are changed don't be afraid to speak not in your native language the Holy Spirit will not take your tongue and twist it around this is you have to speak but the Spirit will give you the words. So when you speak, you use your vocal cords. But the Spirit provides the words. When I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, 1978, I got just five syllables. Yeah, tokalala. No, he had a good deal of tokalala. Yeah, bro. That's all. And I practiced. No, go move on. You batu palu. I said those words a lot. I got told by the instead of batu palu, I got told all trouble trouble. And more came, more words, and more, and more. Ado, ado, ado. And suddenly, I got told me. Kayeshi paranda kola ma de koroma yindos da 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 basu koroma de na kolonde. Now you've heard it. No, I put that okay. Now, when that goes through the body, you got to let that go. You got to let that go. You got to let that go. But there's power in those words. No, that goes through the body. That's not the problem. That's so much love. And the Lord will use you to heal the sick and raise the dead, just like He did us. Because I, you are the truth of the living. He is the apple of the truth. Where do I go? Because I, you are the truth. Let go. Mark that was what I heard. We don't want to know. That other problem. I have a story for you. It was in the Mokur refugee camp. 1997, January 8. I'll never forget that day. I was in the church there teaching. And we ended the class. The students walked outdoors. Two of them came and asked me some questions. Grace yelled at me from outside. Jack, come here. I ran outdoors. And I saw a Korean man holding his two-year-old 
daughter by the heels. And he was beating her on the back. She had drowned in the baptistry. And he was trying to beat the water out of her. She had died. She was dead. She had no pulse. No heartbeat. Her lips were blue. She's dead. Grace rebuked that spirit of death on that girl. I said to the man, give her to me. I laid her down. And I did everything wrong. Except one thing. I said, Death Spirit, get off this girl in the name of Jesus. I leaned over her. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Son, blow into her mouth. Now, when the little girl, you should breathe gently. I didn't. I blew my guts into her. Four times. And suddenly, her arms started jerking and her legs started jerking. And I knew she was alive. I kept blowing. Five more times. <laughs> Later, I realized I was blowing life into her body. Suddenly, her eyelids opened. Her eyeballs came back down into place. And she started crying. We gave her to her mother. And her mother was shrieking. She was hysterical. I was not kind to her. I said, shut up! <laughs> Unbelief can stop a miracle. We said, look, tea, tea. <laughs> daughter was alive. People ask me, well, what about brain damage? I say, if God can raise her from the dead, don't you think he can stop brain damage? But we checked on her six months later. She was running and playing and talking. She was normal. That's God. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what you need. You need it in Burma and in Burma here in America. You need that Holy Spirit baptism. I hope this is all clear to you. That life is fun. I love it. It's powerful. You have a good time with the Holy Spirit. And it's fruitful. You have much fruit. Wherever you go, and some of you probably will stay here, and others will go to the whole world in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to issue a call. I want those who want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, stand up. 
ye edo tara do vi pi wet ta mu dimme edo la do do yo ata pu yo ata sodal mo yo ata so si ata blei di no mo di sada de kholi kuri sada de asho no te ba kholi de kholi ne mil lo ba yo aso ko mo yo ata so si ata pu di do sada de de power no lo ba yo aso ko mo le ko mu do ko di bi kino you need this power no lo ba ta aso ko mo we no goro ดังคําว่านะเพียร์อเวอีตาซูเรโลตามะเฮโลเลตามะยามะเนาะไอ้กอนทูเพย์ฟอร์ยูแอนด์ยูอร์กอนทูรีซีฟเนาะดิมมิ
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't be afraid to use your tongue. In the name of Jesus, receive. 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 Power, power, power. Power in the name of Jesus. Power, power, power. 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 Power
praise you. Lord, we praise you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we praise you. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It's in our daily You can give to other people. Those who have received Jesus as their Savior and Lord. You can give the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now the first command God gave man. Genesis 1:28. Be fruitful and multiply. The job is too big for you. You need to reproduce yourselves in other people. We are going to send 200 missionaries to Burma. 5,000 because of you. You are the seed. Go multiply. Not addition. Multiply. And let's send 5,000 people to the world. To And let it be. Go a creek. Amen. Amen. Let Burma be the nation of Jesus Christ. Okay, amen. Amen. Come on, let him know how much you enjoyed him. Look at the one next to you smiling really, really big. <laughs> Say, wow. You look really good this morning. You want to learn, you want to learn some Portuguese? <laughs> All right, say this, Hale. Te amo. Yeah. Look at the one next to you. Say, hey, yo. Yeah. Yeah. You just said, yeah. I love you. <laughs> All of us are praying. That when you leave here, at the end of this week, that you will be different than when you came here. Your life will be stronger. You will be more in love with Jesus. More full of the Holy Spirit than ever before in your entire life. So that when you go back home, you will be world changers. Amen. Amen. How many have your Bibles? Lift them up. Wait a minute. Give the one next to you a Bible blessing. <laughs> Open to Acts, the first uh, Acts, the second chapter. Just going to flow along with what Pastor Jack was talking. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And as he said, speaking in tongues is just one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The real power of the Holy Spirit is to tell you who you are in Jesus. And that you don't have to back down from anything when the enemy confronts you. Because the enemy will confront you. And when the enemy attacks you, what he's trying to attack is your identity. Who you are in Christ. Say, I am. I am a child of God. A child of God. I am. I am filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. I know who I am. I know who I am. This is what it says in Acts, the second chapter. Verse one through four. On the day of Pentecost, seven weeks after Jesus' resurrection, the believers were meeting together in one place. Just like we're doing right here. And then suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring mighty windstorm in the skies above them. And it filled the house where they were meeting. Just like we are here. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and sat on each of them. And everyone there was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Just like we're here. Deep will pay and do it. Lift your hands. You don't do it. Okay. Everybody got hands? Well, you will go ahead, yeah. Okay. Say, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Right here today. Right here today. Right now. Right now. I believe. I believe. I receive. I receive. I'm filled. I'm filled. With the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. Right. Your heads are working good. Now, shout amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And when you pray, fill me with the Holy Spirit. You may begin to think these strange words in your mind. Words that you didn't know. Sounds that you didn't know. But you have to open your mouth to let those things out. Amen. Amen. How many know how to speak Korean? How many think in Korean? But how many know just thinking? Even if you know how to speak Korean, you have to open up your mouth and speak what you're thinking. Just because you're thinking Korean, doesn't mean. <laughs> No, you have to open up your mouth and speak it. And as the Holy Spirit speaks through you, he, he still has to use your tongue and your mouth. Amen. Amen. Slap the one next to you and say, Amen. Now go down to verse 8. Verse and, and it says, and yet we hear them speaking the language of our lands where we were born. Here we are, the Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, province of Asia, all over the place. And all we hear these people speaking in our own languages. The wonderful things that God has done. So people from around the world 
heard them speaking in their languages. Language that these people didn't go to school to learn. But the Holy Spirit knows every language. He knows Korean, English, Portuguese, Russian, Chinese. He speaks every language. And then he also speaks a heavenly language. That is a language straight from heaven. That gives you the ability to speak right to the Father. Just your personal communication line between you and your heavenly Father. Wow. Now turn to the book of Luke. Because we know the Holy Spirit has come to fill us. He is God in us. He is God with us. And this one it says in Luke 4. Verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus. Full of the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Left the Jordan. And he was led by the Spirit. To go into the wilderness. Where the devil tempted him. For 40 days. And he ate nothing. All, all that time and he was very hungry. So we see Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. If Jesus needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so when he leaves that place, the river, he is immediately confronted attacked by the devil. So let's see where the devil is attacking him. Go back to the third chapter of the book of Luke. Verse 21 and 22. And it says, One day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. Now this is being baptized in water. As he was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove and a voice from heaven said, Father in heaven, speaking to Jesus his son on the earth and this is what he said to Jesus you are my beloved son and I am fully pleased with you God says Jesus you are my son and I'm pleased with you now think about that first God said I'm pleased with you and Jesus had not performed one miracle yet raised one dead person yet healed any blind eyes yet cast out any devils yet and yet God said I'm pleased with you you want to know why he was pleased with him you are my son because he was his son. If we are not careful, young people, we try to do things to get God to love us and, and, so, and do things to please him when he's already pleased with us. He already loves you. If you're a girl, how many girls we have? Okay, I saw some guys starting to raise <laughs> If your young lady say, I am a daughter of God. I am a daughter of God. Young men say, <laughs> Young men say, I am a son of God. I am a son of God. 
And he's pleased with you. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. Doesn't mean we won't slip and fall. He's your father. And he loves you. And he's pleased with you. And if you fall, he doesn't kick you while you're down. He picks you back up. And says, come on, let's keep walking. 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 So now let's find out what happened with Jesus when the devil tempted him. Go back to the Luke, the fourth chapter. Go to verse 3. And it says this. Then the devil said to him, Jesus, if you are the Son of God, Change this stone into a loaf of bread. Go down to verse 9. Then the devil took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem. To the highest point of the temple. And said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. Look where the devil tempted Jesus. Look where he attacked Jesus. Look at where he came against Jesus. Was not his ability to work miracles. Not his ability to jump off a tall building. Not his ability to turn stones into bread. But he asked the very thing that God said to Jesus. Remember when the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus? What's the next thing Jesus heard? He heard the Father say, You are my son. He gave him an identity. You're not just Mary and Joseph's son. You are my son. He said before you were Mary and Joseph's son. You are my son. Jeremiah the prophet in the Old Testament. Said this about you and me. Before I was in my mother's womb, I already knew you. Before you look like you look now, he already knew you. Before you had a body, he already knew you. And he used that mom and dad to form a body in her womb to give you a form so you can live on this earth but before you were in that body God already knew you. Amen. So in other words you're not an accident. Look at the one next to you say, I'm not an accident. You're not an accident? And you weren't born on an by accident. You were born on purpose. With a purpose. You were born to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be a world changer. Amen. Shout, I'm a world changer. I'm a world changer. But the same thing that, that, the, that, the, that the devil attacked Jesus with is the same thing he's going to attack you with. Our identity. Why is that important? Because if you don't know who you are, everybody else will tell you who you are. And when everybody else tells you who you are, you're now in bondage to them. Because they gave you your identity. But when you know who your father says you are, he frees you to be everything he created you to be. 
He said, Jesus, are you if you're the if you're the Son of God? Turn these stones into bread. I know you're hungry. You haven't eaten for 40 days. You ever think about not eating for 40 days? If you don't eat one day, this is how you are. I'm starving. <laughs> I'm going to die. In 40 days. He's, you have to remember, Jesus was as much human being as you and I are. He was son of God, but he's also son of man. He bled just like you and us. He hurt like you and us. Had emotions just like you and us. He got hungry just like you and us. When he got hungry, his stomach made all kinds of noises. Jesus had to go to the bathroom like you and me? Well, yes. <laughs> Jesus was just like you and me. That's why he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he hears God say, You are my son. The Holy Spirit solidifies who you are in God. He is the one that gives you your true identity. Before I was an American, I'm a Christian. Amen. Be proud to be Korean. But before you were Korean, you were Christ. Because before you were, he already knew you. He had a purpose for you. He had a destiny for you. So what does Jesus say? He says, no, it is written. I know what it says. I know who God says I am. His word tells me who I am. So I don't have to turn these stones into bread. Then he goes through. He says, if I show you all these kingdoms, I'll give them to you. If you'll bow and worship me. Jesus says, I will worship nobody but the God that gave me my identity. Amen. Amen. Everybody worships something. Everybody worships something. There are millions of gods in the world. But he is the God of all gods. Amen. 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 Even the people that worship gods, they worship gods made with their hands. I worship the God that made me with his hands. Amen. Amen. You see, you see people that worship idols. If they go somewhere, they have to go pick up their God and take their God with them to get their God where they're going. My God picks me up and he takes me where he's going. Amen. I'm glad I worship a God that I don't have to pick up. <laughs> I'm glad I worship a God that picks me up. Because <laughs> think about it. If I went somewhere and I forgot my God, <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm here and my God's over there. <laughs> With my God, before I got here, he was already here. Amen. I can't go anywhere where he's not. 
Then the devil says, uh, he says, why don't you just throw yourself off of that? Because the scriptures say, he will bear thee up lest he dash thy foot against the stone. This is why we need to know the word of God. Because the devil will take scriptures out of context. He will pervert those scriptures. But Jesus says, no. I'm in the care of my father. That made me and created me. And I don't have to throw myself off of the temple. To prove a point. Or to prove who I am. Because I know who I am. I am. A son of God. I am a son of God. Young men say, I am a son of God. Young ladies say, I am a daughter of God. The enemy is going to attack you. He's going to say, Are you really a Christian? Are you? How could you do that if you're a Christian? How could you say that if you're a Christian? I'm a Christian, but I'm not perfect yet. And then the Holy Spirit convicts me. He challenges me when I do something wrong and says, that's not your identity. That's not how you act. That's not how you talk. That's not the direction you go. Because you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. And the Holy Spirit leads you, guides you. So when the enemy attacks, because it always comes back to your identity. Because again, if you don't know who you are, everybody else will tell you who you are. You live in America now. People will say you're a refugee. No, you're not. You're a child of God. God's got you in his hand. He has you right where he wants you. You're not here by accident. You're here on purpose. We may not understand that. The world tried to rip you away. The devil tried to destroy your homes and families. He brought you thousands of miles to another country. But you don't think God already knew that? Now he says, know who you are. You're not trying to be an American. You're a child of God. And because you're a child of God, it doesn't matter where you live, your identity in Christ never changes. Your identity in Christ in Burma Mirabar or Thailand is the same as it is here in America. You are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are who God says you are. Give God a good praise. Let me give you a few things here. What happens when you don't know who you are? Again, if you don't know who you are, others will always tell you who you are. And then they have power over you. Because they're the one that gave you your identity. You need to do this, you need to do that. What's your father telling you you're supposed to do? Our parents want to be proud of us. Our parents want us to be successful. So they were trying to tell us, do this, do this, go to school for this, study this. And they want that because they want to be proud of us. And they want you to be successful. But is that what God wants you to do? Any cultural issues. <laughs> I wanted to be a baseball player. I love playing baseball. Then God took my parents to Brazil 
We were children. And we had to go with them. And when I got to Brazil, they don't play baseball in Brazil. They play soccer, football. I go, I don't know how to play soccer. I don't want to play soccer. I want to play baseball. I got mad at God. I said, God, you took me to a country. They don't even play baseball. <laughs> but God had a plan for my life. That he called me to be a pastor. But my sister is a missionary. My brother works for NASA. He guards the spaceships. But we're all doing what God called us to do. Everybody's not supposed to go to Bible school. Some of you are supposed to go to financial schools. Medical schools. Law schools. God's calling you to all different places because he needs you there full of the Holy Spirit to speak the language of heaven that makes a difference in people's lives that they will come to know Jesus Christ as a so don't try to do something don't try to be something that God didn't call you to be. Amen. You love Pastor Clay? You love Pastor Hart? You love Pastor Clay? You love Pastor Hart? You love Pastor Clay? You love Pastor Hart? He's a, he's a great preacher. He's a great pastor. <laughs> but everybody's not supposed to be like Pastor Clay. But when you see him appear, and he said, I want to be like him. That's good. But does God want you to be like Maybe instead of a pastor, God wants you to be a doctor. Because one day, Pastor Clay may need a doctor. Another one is this. What goes right along with what I just said. When you don't know who you are, you're tempted to be who you're not. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be me. I'm the only me. Say that. I'm the only me. I'm the only me. Say I'm the only me. I'm the only me. When God made you, after He made you, and He looked down at you, this is what He said. I'll never do that again. That's what He said. When He saw you, I'll never do that again. Because that's perfect. I don't need another one of them. They're the only one. I'm, I'm the only me. 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 You can't be me. But you know what? I can't be you. Amen. So don't try to be something you're not. That's what he tried to get Jesus to do. Throw yourself off the temple. Angels will catch you. Look at the fame that you'll get. Everybody will know you. She said, that's not what I'm about. I already have my identity. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And the last one is this. When you don't know who you are, you will live your life trying to please everybody. 
And you can't please everyone. You do things you're not supposed to do. You act ways you're not supposed to act. Because you're trying to please them. You can't please everybody. But if you please him, that's all that matters. Girls, see a good looking boy. He's so good looking. He's handsome. What can I do for you? To please you. And then that boy that really doesn't care about you says, Do this. And you know you're not supposed to. But you want to please him. And all of a sudden you give yourself away to someone that really doesn't care. But, but when you know who you are, I don't care how good looking you are. I know who I am. So identity is so and that's why when Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, the first thing God does is give him an identity. You are my son, and I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased with you. Young men, young ladies, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to let you know not just to miracles, not just lay hands on the sick and then leave. not just to cast out demons, not just to, to, to speak with other tongues, but the Holy Spirit is in you to remind you and to reinforce in you who you are. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You have purpose. You have destiny. You are important. You are world changers. Give God praise. Stand your feet with me. Then we'll, we'll take a little break here. Okay, so the call to school. Just gonna pray a, a quick prayer. Yeah, no, but you about to kick it let go. Because I know Pastor Jack already prayed and laid hands on you. But we're praying that when you leave here, you will have no doubts about who you are in Jesus. Then when you leave here, you're just about pleasing him. You won't try to do things you're not supposed to. You won't try to be who you're not. You won't worry about what people say about you because you know who you are. And every time the enemy attacks you, the Holy Spirit will remind you just like he reminded Jesus. You are a son of God. That's what the devil tried. If you are the son of God, he tried to get Jesus to question who he was. Jesus never questioned because he knew who he was. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Holy Spirit, I pray right now for every young man and every young lady that when this week is over, there will not be one bit of doubt who they are in you.
They are your sons. They are your daughters. You have a purpose for them. They were born on purpose. They have, they have great destinies. They are important. They are valuable. They are world changers. Fill them to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen.